I've been doing a lot of flash photography lately using the Sony ZV-10 and this Godox TT350S flash. If you haven't seen my review video on this flash, then go check that out after this. Now I've discovered that if you're doing a lot of close-up photography of lenses that actually require you to be right up close to your subject, then sometimes the position of the flash mounted on top of your camera can actually cast a shadow on your subject. And in this video, I'm going to show you the inexpensive way to combat that and open up another world of flash photography with this one simple upgrade that even the professionals use. This is the X-Pro S TTL wireless trigger from Godox and this X-Pro S model is compatible with Sony cameras but you can also get models that are compatible with Canon, Fuji and Pentax cameras. This trigger utilizes the Godox Wireless X system which features in external flashes like the TT350S but also in outdoor studio and other camera flashes but with this Sony compatible version you can also control Sony original flashes as long as they have the Godox XR1S receiver attached. So why a wireless flash trigger? How is it going to benefit me? Well, it's going to give you the opportunity to experiment with different lighting positions other than that normal front on position. Maybe you want a shot where the lighting is dramatically coming in from the left or just from behind or something that isn't going to be in that basic default position which most people adopt. Having something like this is going to allow your camera to communicate with your flash at a distance of up to 100 meters and give you that burst of light at that precise moment. How these two communicate together is via infrared. Once they are connected this trigger sends a beam of light from here and is detected by the infrared receiver on the flash here causing it to flash at that snap moment. In the box you get the instructions this microfiber cloth and the wireless trigger itself which comes with a removable hot shoe connector protector. It would have been nice for it to have come with a soft case just like the flash does as you can see on my large LCD screen here that it already has a few scratches. Attaching it to a camera like the Sony zv 10 is simple as it fits directly onto the hot shoe slot and the trigger can be tightened for a secure fit. The trigger is in an angled position which varies from some other triggers which aren't and those ones often force the user to have to hunch over the camera just to see the display but having it at this angle means that you're going to be able to adopt a much more comfortable position that's going to allow you to easily read the display especially if you're doing your photography on a tripod. The downside to this sort of form factor is it's going to give your camera a bigger overall footprint, particularly on a mirrorless camera like this and if you've got a camera with a viewfinder you may find yourself touching the trigger with your forehead every time you're going in for a shot but obviously that won't be applicable to mirrorless cameras without viewfinders. It has all of the buttons that you'll need for almost every flash setting. This array of buttons often means that you'll very rarely find yourself venturing into the menu and with that big blue backlit LCD screen most of the functions for the buttons are labelled on the screen itself. The buttons themselves are very clicky and the select dial just like all the other buttons maintains that overall premium feel of this Godox trigger. On the side of the trigger you've got the power and autofocus assist beam switch and on the other side opening this cover reveals a USB-C port for firmware upgrades and also a 2.5mm sync cord jack for another wireless connection to this trigger for flashes not compatible with the Godox X wireless system. On the back of the trigger a slot for two AA batteries. Once you follow the instruction connected both of these two things together and also if you haven't already enabled external flash in your camera settings then you've now turned this external flash that you previously sat on top of your camera into an off camera flash and with the correct additional accessories into a studio light all thanks to this wireless trigger. Without going through all of the settings and functions in depth I'll quickly run through its features. You're able to have up to 16 different groups connected to this trigger and 5 groups shown on the display at any one time or if you only use a one flash setup like me then you can select to just having that one group on display. You can quickly interchange between single flashes on one group or separate groups to another flash or multiple flashes on other groups. It supports up to 32 different wireless channels so if you're shooting at an event with multiple photographers who are also using wireless flash systems then you should be able to find a wireless channel that doesn't interfere with anyone else. And to further decrease that chance of wireless interference you're able to set up to 99 different wireless IDs that both 
both your trigger and the flash share that allows only your trigger to set off your flash. This trigger fully supports TTL auto flash, one eight thousandth of a second high speed sync, multi flash, manual flash, flash exposure compensation, TCM transform function, one shoot and multi shoot settings, group modeling lamp control, group zooming, and it gives you the ability to adjust all group output values simultaneously. So if you're a pro flash photographer, I'm sure you'll find a lot of those features useful to you. Together with the TT350S flash, I'm able to control every setting that's on the flash via the wireless trigger. As a battery saving measure, if this trigger doesn't detect any transmission for 90 seconds, then it will go into battery saving mode and just pressing any button will wake it back up. To ensure you've got a connection with the flash, you're able to send a test flash to the flash and you can do that without the camera being on. When you're taking shots with the one flash setup like the one I've got and with the screen on the trigger set to only showing the one active group, the display shows the current mode. I've got it set to multi mode on, but this can also be set to multi mode off and TTL mode on. And those changes are reflected automatically on the flash itself. A point to consider when you are making minor adjustments to the flash power from the full one to one power all the way down to this flash's lowest power output, which for this one is one one two eighth power, you'll only be able to make incremental changes of one third stops. You'll find in the real world of using this wireless trigger just how useful it is having that plethora of buttons giving you the ability of easily making those fine adjustments by either pressing one button or in most cases one button and the rotation of the select dial. And because of the nature of this setup just look how far away I can be from my subject and that flash. It can also be mounted on its stand and on a tripod if needed giving you that photography studio setup without that vast expense. So that's the Godox X Pro wireless trigger with this simple upgrade to your flash photography setup at a great value. It's hard not to understand why so many photographers use wireless triggers just like this in their setup. This trigger in particular has a good build quality that matches other Godox products. It's easy to operate, clear to instruct, connects with your external flash almost instantly and has those additional wireless connectivity features that are going to allow you to control multiple flashes and setup configurations all at the same time. There are so many different setup variations that you're going to be able to do with something like this that will allow you to just to experiment just to see how those positional intensity and flash changes affect your subject and once you get confident with your one flash setup why not add another flash? If you're using a wireless setup just like this, tag me in your social posts so I can have a look at your setups and your shots. Accessories like this show that you don't need expensive equipment to get those awesome lighting effects like the pros are able to get. You can get pro level effects just like they do with minimal spending. Thanks for watching. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more photography content just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.